On our series, The World After Coronavirus, today we have with us, joining from Ecuador, Yolanda Kakabatse. Uh, Yolanda has been the president of IUCN, the president of WWF International, and we're going to ask her today what she thinks sustainable development might look like in a post-COVID world. I don't think one can even mention sustainability unless you recognize that the ecosystem health equals human health. And, and what we are seeing today is that there is an imbalance in that relation uh, for several decades. That is what, what we have seen in these last three months is, is the, the ecosystems hitting back at us, human beings, and saying, you see, this is what happens when, when uh, we are abused in such a way. It, it is a challenge that I think is also going to be in some way energized by the young people. I think that there is not going to be just one Greta. There will be hundreds and thousands, and I hope so, that we have lots of young people with radical positions that we cannot continue as we are. The, the business as usual is not acceptable anymore. I don't think decision makers are getting the message, which in a way constitutes a, a provocation, an opportunity for all of us uh, for the day after. And we have to prepare not only the decision makers, but all citizens of uh, of preventing the next crisis, of avoiding situations where uh, we are surprised when, when we knew it was coming. What happens to the idea of sustainable development? Does it become more important, sustainability, or does it become less important post-corona? Sustainability, unfortunately, has not been... Um, the source of integrated systemic thinking. Up to now, I can still see in government officials everywhere, in Ecuador and many other countries, thinking that sustainability is taking care of natural resources, of the forests, of biodiversity, and that's it. But we know that sustainability is much more than that. It is security, it is health, it has to do with governance. We cannot address sustainability for the future unless we have the right institutions with the very clear mandates. Where is the United Nations in all of this? But one of the things that's clear is all countries seem to be doing something, but they're not doing most of it collectively. We are looking at today's world with governments and governance being questioned all the way through. The United Nations at this moment is disappeared. Where is it? We can't feel the United Nations being a leader at this moment. And basically because it doesn't know what to do. It has not prepared itself to address crisis. It has prepared itself to endless discussions that need three, five, 10 years to, go, to come to an agreement. We can't afford that anymore. Decisions have to be taken immediately um, with smaller bureaucracy than we have, not only in the United Nations, but in regional bodies and national bodies. Uh, the emergency of today has given us a very strong message. Decisions can be taken in a second when you need to, when everybody's aware of, of the urgency of the decisions. But definitely we have to question what we have created, which today are uh, organizations that have become irrelevant.